founded in 1848. It was also host to several major exhibitions of Remington's work in the 1900s, including the artist's last and highly regarded exhibition of 1909. <coughs> so Nobler purchased the collection from the Ogdensburg Public Library in July of, um, well, in the 1950s, and exhibited in their New York gallery, and then offered it, offered that collection for sale to the Koch Foundation. Remember, that is the family with connections to Cody, um, based in Long Island. The Koch Foundation was able to make the entire purchase. William F. Davidson of Nodler pitched the collection of art <coughs> artifacts, bless you, as quote, a really remarkable collection and one that would stimulate great popular attention and appeal. Certainly it's done that. The Honorable Robert Coe, on behalf of the Coe Foundation, was looking to bring such an attraction to Cody, Wyoming, that place in the West that he loved. And so he purchased the collection in three parts between November of 57 and April of 59, just in time for Bill McCracken to install it in the new Whitney Western, or at the time Whitney Gallery of Western Art. So a condition of the Coe's gift was that a proper gallery would be in readiness to receive it by January 1959. Um, this prompted that gift from Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney to fund construction of the Whitney Gallery of Western Art. The Buffalo Bill Museum trustees and officers, residents of Cody, were thrilled. They were absolutely thrilled. The Memorial Association wrote, We are deeply grateful to the W.R. Coe Foundation for this splendid and inspirational gift. It's given a real impetus to our Buffalo Bill Historical Center. So perhaps McCracken um, was prescient in knowing that such a collection would have a fabulous support and audience in Wyoming. It's really a gift that the Coe Foundation purchased it in whole so that it wasn't broken up and spread to the winds. Um, so in that sense, it's really um, the best possible outcome for the sale of a collection that was once here in Ogdensburg. So in 1959, the collection was received in Cody and it was installed. The idea was to create a facsimile of the artist's studio from the beginning, but the museum really didn't have enough money to do that first. Then in 1981, so oh, here's a quick photo. Mm -hmm. Laura, when do you think this is dated? Well, that room was installed in about 1972. Okay. Uh, that's probably from the 70s, and that was then dismantled in 1995. Got it. So this was a recreation not using the studio collection, but to evoke the collection. And this is what the first installation in Cody looked like. And you saw that earlier picture with McCracken among all of the objects as well. So they were hung on these paneled walls, um, but we didn't really get around to installing it like this. Isn't that a great photo? Yeah. <laughs> so this is Peter Hasrick. Many of you all may know him. He's um, one of my mentors, helped, has helped me throughout my career, and he's a colleague of Laura's and mine, and I love using this photo mm -hmm. of Peter from 81. Um, but I use it specifically because Peter was at the helm when the recreation of the Remington Studio was installed. So at this time, the collection was reconstructed in a replica in a corner of the Whitney. And even to scale, 20 by 40 feet. It was carefully duplicated. Um, it was all made possible through funding from Lawrence Rockefeller. We have some really awesome connections in Cody. Rockefeller donated $95,000 to see this project through. So the installation, and here it is today, recreated the studio using those authentic objects collected by the artist sketches and there are a few reproduced items so for example the clay model here is re a reproduction by a local artist just to show what it might have looked like had he been working in clay in his studio but most of these are authentic the lion's share are um, the design was based on written documents photographs and of course that loud car painting which we have discussed the goal as stated by the curator director Peter Hasrick was to, quote, display the center's collection of Remington materials in the appropriate setting, thus providing the human context to those unique objects of art and history. People are absolutely enamored of this space. Um, it's generally what they've heard about about the Whitney before they come, and it's what they tell their friends about afterward. The project summary um, 
governing this project suggested that these reconstructed buildings and objects within them allow visitors to experience in vivid, close-up fashion the places in which the artists work and the materials that they relied upon to help them create works of art. So this is an unprecedented learning opportunity for us. It's a window onto the past and into a particular milieu. The studio, the works of art, and the artifacts evoke for the visitors the living man behind the paintings and the sculptures. Um, interestingly, the Remington Studio Collection uh, is one of three other studio collections in Cody. It was the cornerstone of our original collection and probably one of the reasons why we became an attractive site for other studio collections acquisition and gift. So those three include Joseph Henry Sharps at the Roki Hut. This was his studio cabin in Montana on Crow Agency. It was moved by one, uh, paid, the movement was paid for by one Forrest Finn, reconstructed on site at the center and filled with um, objects of his collection, paintings, books, tapestries, etc. Um, really a special object. We also have the studio collection of W.H.D. Kerner, famed uh, illustrator, Great American Age of Illustration. It was installed uh, like this in the 1970s um, and it became the model for the Remington Studios reinstallation later in the 80s but it's no longer on view in this particular form. We just have Kerner works throughout the gallery. Um, finally, we have the Alexander Fenster Proctor Studio. This is um, almost encyclopedic. It was gifted to us over 10 years by Proctor's family members. Those of you who aren't familiar with Proctor probably are and may not know it. He is the creator of many public monuments um, and including this Teddy Roosevelt monument um, in, in pieces here. This is a painted plaster model to help showcase the casting process. But this, this has everything from clay models um, to plaster cast to bronzes, all of his best. We have a great video of the first film that the Metropolitan Museum of Art made about the um, sculpting process featuring Proctor. So Remington is in great company with three other studio collections in Cody. In 1986, Edward Abbey remarked on the Remington Studio Collection at the center. He wrote, the artist in his studio, 3,000 miles away, transcends through the magic of the art, the gulf of space and time between New Rochelle, New York, and Buffalo Bills, Cody, Wyoming. Between then and now, between the wonder of what was and the beauty of what yet remains. He also commented that one cannot imagine a better place for a Remington Museum than the small town Cody. And I, partial as I am, believe that he was right. There are several important reasons why the Remington Studio Collection resonates particularly with our little corner of Northwest Wyoming. Importantly, Remington had ties to Buffalo Bill Cody and to the town of Cody. In 1892, here's Remington in London. I love this photo. He's visiting the Wild West. He met Buffalo Bill Cody for the first time on this occasion. Uh, Remington's works were used for Wild West posters, like this one, uh, this example dating to 1889. Remington and Cody are known to have occasionally corresponded while the Wild West toured America. And in 1897, Cody's sister, Helen Cody Wetmore, commissioned Remington to provide two major paintings, which would become illustrations for The Last of the Great Scouts, which is a heavily fictionalized bi biography of Buffalo Bill, published in 1899. We have those two paintings on Brazai at the center, and I'll show you them here. Here's one, Buffalo Bill in the limelight, and the other, Hiding the Trail, celebrating facets of Buffalo Bill's life, both in his youth and at his apotheosis as a showman. In August of 1899, Remington was in Cody for a party hosted by Louisa Cody at the Irma Lake, at Irma Lake on Carter Mountain. Um, though Buffalo Bill was not there, he was off performing, but here is this really fun little sketch um, of Remington dancing the night away in Cody, Wyoming. Remington also became friends with other Codyites over the years, including George Beck, who was one of our town's earliest settlers and a surveyor for Buffalo Bill. 
He was the founder of the first flour mills in Wyoming and a lawyer to boot. Um, you can see that this particular painting, which bears a very striking resemblance to a study that you all have, is inscribed to George Beck right here. It's a personalized painting. And paintings like this one were painted in the Big Horn Basin. Um, I love this painting particularly because this scene is essentially where my neighborhood is located now. I look out onto the McCullough Peaks, mm -hmm. which are in the background, so this has a particular um, special meaning for me. This is life in the cattle country, or rather at post office in cow country. And in 1908, Remington made his last trip west. Where do you guess that he went? He went to Cody. This was a trip at the invitation of George Beck, and he stayed as a guest of Buffalo Bills at Bill's TV Ranch. So we feel strongly that there is this fabulous tie, these deep roots, um, and also to showcase Remington's Western work in, in the West. I mean, we really are in the thick of it. It is just a fabulous opportunity for our guests. So in closing, I'd like to encourage everyone, as I have, to visit Cody and see what's become of the Frederick Remington Studio Collection. I hope you'll all be as pleased as I am with the collection's installation and interpretation. And I can say that I'm pleased with it because I have nothing to do with it. So <laughs> this is an impartial opinion. Um, it's, I hope you all, really, as I am, are comforted in knowing that we at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West are able to provide access to this collection to more than 175,000 visitors annually and many more online. All of the objects in the studio collection are digitized and therefore available for research online. Um, we can also care for the collection exceptionally well and conserve objects in need. Um, we abide the strictest industry standards. We lend liberally of this collection and uh, are happy to work with collegial partners like the Remington and many other exhibitions and organizations. We complement the collection with one of the top Western-focused research libraries in the country, making it available to scholars. And we exhibit Remington's collection and his art in the heart of the West, as I said, a region which captivated him, um, as of course did the East, but the West certainly did as well, and inspired his award-winning paintings and sculptures. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to have this collection, and at this time I'd love to answer any questions uh, as I'm able, and I may call up Laura as well, because her knowledge, both of Remington and of the provenance of the studio collection and the conversations that were had thereafter are far deeper than mine. So uh, if you have questions, I'd love to answer some. Go back to any images. Thank you so much for your time.